Welcome to All Things Moore County, Moore County's weekly radio show highlighting the many facets of the Sand Hills. That includes real estate, lifestyles, community, and neighborhoods. And now, from four properties, here's your host, Bill Sahadi. Good morning and welcome to All Things Moore County. We had a weather event a couple of weeks ago and we uh, just finished another one with Michael. And even though Florence may be long gone and we're now shifting gears because there's definitely a change in the weather, which is late this year, things have cooled down, we're moving into the fall season. But before we speak with our guest, who is the executive producer of the Judson Theater Company, Morgan Sells, I just want to remind people in Moore County, there is going to be a Hurricane Relief Benefit Concert on the 17th of November from noon to midnight, and it's going to be held at the Railhouse Brewery. It's the uh, brainchild of More Choices, Vision for More, musician Jordan Cranford, and the Railhouse Brewery, and all the proceeds are going to be going to the families in Moore County displaced by Hurricane Florence. And the additional rains that have come up this week has not helped the situation at all, and there are a lot of people in Moore County who are, who are still suffering. So uh, we're asking people to come. It's a 12-hour event, and both Four Properties and the American Roofing and Construction Company are are proud sponsors of this event, and we hope that people will come, and they're asking for a donation of $5 at the door, and $1.50 for every Railhouse beer that's sold. The proceeds would be given to the people who need it the most. There'll also be a non-perishable food drive, a winter clothing drive, so a lot of attention to those who desperately need it, and as we move into the spirit of the, the fall and holiday season, this type of an event just brings back the old adage that uh, Moore County is a great place to live, and people here help each other out. And uh, Morgan Sills, who is the executive producer of the Judson Theater Company and who is our guest, is a native of Moore County. And probably, Morgan, you can probably attest to what I just said about the, the giving nature of Moore County. Absolutely. And it's always been that way, that, that people here, when, when people are in a crisis or in a jam or something bad happens, right. they step up and they do what they're supposed to so that we, because we're all in this together. We are. Um, and you're here, it's almost like every year now, it's an anniversary. We get to see you this time of the year. Um, the Judson Theater Company is um, putting on a production um, of Love, Loss, and What I Wore, uh, October the 18th to the 21st at the Hannah Theater. But tell us a little bit about the Judson Theater because you were on last year. We had, was it the Miracle Worker? That was actually this spring. We do two this shows spring. a year. Right. Uh, we're the only professional theater company in Moore County, and this is our seventh season. And uh, the, yes, spring was the Miracle Worker. Right. Um, recent shows that people might have seen, if they're listening, uh, would be they might have seen our production of The Sunshine Boys with Robert Wall and Don Most. They might have seen our production of Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None with Allison Arngrim from uh, Little House on the Prairie right, and uh, 12 Angry Men on Golden Pond. We usually specialize in um, these sort of Golden Age classic plays. So Love, Loss, and What I Wore, which is a contemporary comedy, is a bit of a departure for us. How so? Um, well, it's uh, the play made its debut in New York in 2009. Okay. And we have been saving it um, for when Owens Auditorium was under renovation, because that's our, our permanent home. Right. We are still designated as the professional theater company in residence at Sand Hills Community College. But while they're renovating over there, we needed something very portable and very simpler that we could do in our temporary home, uh, the Hannah Center Theater at the O'Neill School. So this piece that I actually saw seven Seven times when it was um, during its two and a half year run in New York. Uh -huh. This piece that's really these five women, um, five dynamic women share from all walks of life sharing this uh, intimate collection of stories was really the perfect choice for us. So we're, and the response has really been wonderful um, in terms of people saying, yes, you know, we love Nora and Delia Efron. We love their work, their movies. Right. We love this, this contemporary celebration of women. Um, it's the fastest selling show we've ever done. Is that right? Yes. 
The Hanna Theater is a, it's a smaller venue. It's about a th- one-third the size of uh, Owens Auditorium. And in fact, our Sunday afternoon performance is already sold out. So we added a Sunday night for the first time. Um, it seats about 250 people. And, and again, we're using our time during the renovation when we're in this beautiful, smaller space, <coughs> this little jewel box of a playhouse, to do these uh, smaller and simpler plays that you know that it's so you always try to fit the play to the space right and so the audience you know they're even closer right and so the bond between the audience and the actors is is even greater i think people people will love it you know the yeah. experience of it when you uh, reference the fact that you saw the play in new york seven times yes you remind me of because one of the productions you did in the past was steel magnolias right in 1993 at the lucille lortel theater mm-hmm. i saw the original production of Steel Magnolias nine times. Wow. And I have a picture at home of myself with the original cast. Mm -hmm. There were no men in the original production in the play. It was when they transitionalized to a movie that they brought in the the male characters. Right. And the entire Steel Magnolias play was shot. Is in the shop. Is in the shop. Yeah. It's not all over the the, uh, neighborhood. Right. So adapting a a play to a movie uh, can can change it a little bit. Yeah, well, they always talk about open it up, open it up. Right. And and, the, and all the things, because movies are show, whereas plays almost by definition have to be tell. So right. a movie will let you go to all those places right. with just a cutaway, whereas you don't want to see the stagehands struggling to change to all these different locations. Right. Um, that's sort of an inherent thing. Now, this play, Love, Loss, and What I Wore, if the title sounds familiar, it's actually based on uh, the best-selling book by Eileen Beckerman. So the piece had tremendous life right. uh, as a book first, and then the Efron sisters took it and and adapted it, not only with the stories from the book, but also stories from their famous friends, like uh, Rosie O'Donnell, um, Richard Rogers' daughter, Mary Rogers, all all these people. They asked all these women, you know, what what are the articles of clothing that you remember most, and what are the stories you have that you associate with them? Right. So it's sort of this wonderful communal system sisterhood in 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 the writing that you know it's funny and warm in the way that all the Efron's work when Harry met Sally Julie and Julia you've got mail sleepless in Seattle it's funny and warm like that but there's also this wonderful New York point of view uh-huh. and this um wonderfully female point of view because it's not political let's talk about the female point of view because it's very timely it is very timely there's a lot going on in the news but you know at judson theater company we have a rule uh, that we stick to we'll do a play that makes you feel of course a play that makes you think absolutely but we will never do a play that tells you what to think Uh uh-huh Um, A good example of this would be the 2016 presidential election. Our fall show, as you remember, was 12 Angry Men. That's right. So it's timely. It's about something that's, you know, in the current cultural conversation. But it doesn't say, you know, this is good and that is bad. It just opens up the door to the dialogue. Right. And what's been interesting with this one, Bill, is talking with, like, uh, the super women of Moore County. I mean, women that, you know, we all know them, like people who really run this world or at least a little corner of it, and asking them about their happy stories and their other stories about what are these articles of clothing that you remember and what memories do they bring forth and hearing things like, oh, of course people comment on what I wear to work, Morgan. Or um, another friend who was said, you know, I'm an older woman with long hair and people are always <clears throat> commenting about how brave I am. Uh-huh. You know, things like that that maybe guys don't necessarily have to have to deal with. And happy stories, too, of like family jewelry that's been passed down or things that they've uh, the first really nice thing they bought mm. for themselves when they had their own money things like that you remind me of the um the story that um uh fragrances and scents right remind people when they were kids the standing in an elevator with your grandmother or your grandfather and picking up a scent that they wore and then today uh getting a whiff of that scent and it takes you back to another time absolutely my grandfather wore old spice yeah and it's like right. boom uh, yeah i still wear old spice oh my god yikes um but that's right it takes you right back to that time mm-hmm. um tell me about the um 
the actors who are going to be in the production because they're fairly well known. You brought a lot of very well known people to Moore County. Absolutely. There's a star, at least one star with every show that we do. And this was one of the reasons that I saw it seven times in New York okay. was they had a rotating celebrity cast that changed every month. Okay. So they kept getting people who don't do theater very often in New York. To do a spot so show. I kept having to go back because I, you know, they're, they're only here when they're here to see them live folks when they're still walking this earth wow. and um so when they're there you have to go right um already within this past year tab hunter who starred in our very first show love letters you know he passed on he and did. the show he did here yeah. was the last thing he did live on stage is that right yeah i got him back on the stage after 30 years away and the love letters here was the last thing he did so now that memory while valuable before is now priceless because you can't go and make it. You can't go and see him in a show again. But here in Love Loss and What I Wore, um, we have Sally Struthers, mm -hmm. who audiences will know. She's a two-time Emmy winner and a Golden Globe Award winner, probably best known to um, people who were around in the 70s as Gloria on All in the Family. Right. Uh, and then to married to a, Meathead, right? Married to Meathead <clears throat> and, and Archie, her dad, and Edith, her mom, but um, known to another generation, a generation later, as Babette on Gilmore Girls. Right. So, um, and like so many people uh, that you see on TV, you can't beat TV for exposure. Right. But she's done a ton of theater on Broadway and all around the country, and really around the around the world. Right. So we're thrilled to have her here. We also have um, Kim Coles, who's another uh, TV regular. Audiences will know her the best from the groundbreaking Fox series, Living Single, with uh, Queen Latifah mm -hmm. and Kim Fields from The Facts of Life. She was Sinclair on Living Single, so woo-woo-woo to all of you Living Single fans out there. Right. And they also know her from uh, the series In Living Color. They know her from her reality things on the mole and celebrity fit club and things like that we've never really had anybody who was in that world actively so we're excited to have her and she has local ties her parents um are in raleigh okay and and she's a wonderful wonderful uh comedian and just a warm uh, warm presence and and everything we have a really great cast for this one finally yeah. i know that sandhill's audience is here right will know joyce reeling um, and they know her primarily as a columnist for the pilot and, uh -huh. and a, as a force, you know, in the community. But in her past life, before she retired here to Pinehurst, Joyce had a long and distinguished career on Broadway. She was in the original cast of Fifth of July and Prelude to a Kiss on Broadway. She did all these wonderful off-Broadway plays like Extremities and the Miss Firecracker Contest. She also did a lot of series television in New York. She's still, watch your Law & Order reruns, uh -huh. you'll see Joyce. Is that right? she's on there quite a bit and uh, Kate and Allie and Ed and and all these different series and and movies mm. like um Longtime Companion which was kind of a groundbreaking movie and uh, Lorenzo's Oil you have a um, you yeah. have a, a history of bringing some very talented people to Moore County but mm -hmm. more more so than just the people that you bring those people have generally not worked with each other until they've come here correct and that's got to create a synergy that's very uh, gratifying it does I mean uh, part of the reason that we we did what we did in terms of having a celebrity in every show and using these known people was we looked back at the theater that had been in Moore County before we started and the the theater companies that had started and gone under mm -hmm. and we knew that we needed that level of talent because a that's where Moore County is headed more and more people are moving here from sophisticated right. places right. where they have these big performing arts centers that bring in this big talent and also just as a as an indicator of level of what we were of what we're doing of what we're trying to uh or what we are accomplishing we're seven years in yeah and um and people get a kick out of it you know to see these people in the flesh that they've seen behind the glass of a television screen and right. get to right after the show the actors always come out so they get to take the picture or say you know i've always loved your work yeah get an autograph that kind of thing as much as well as uh, this show is selling out there's still mm -hmm. a few tickets left for a couple of the shows there are and we want to get people to uh 
be aware where they can get them? Sure. Um, you can. The easiest way to get tickets is, is uh, from right there, the comfort of your own couch, is to visit our website, judsontheater.com. Mm-hmm. You can buy tickets there. You can also buy, there are limited quantities of tickets available to purchase in person right. at the Country Bookshop in Southern Pines, the right. Arts Council of Moore County in Southern Pines, and Given Memorial Library in right. Pinehurst. Um, now, our performance schedule is a little different for this one. Uh-huh. Um, it's Thursday night, uh, October the 18th, is opening night, 7 o'clock, early curtain. Mm-hmm. Then Friday night at 8 o'clock. On Saturday, there are two performances. There's a matinee at 2 p.m. and an evening performance at 8 p.m. On Sunday, there's a matinee at 3 p.m., but it's already sold out. So we've added a performance for the first time in Judson Theatre Company history. There is a Sunday night performance at 7 p.m. Okay. All of this at the Hannah Center Theatre at the O'Neill School. At six different, you're going to have six. Uh, six, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the cat, this uh, is all women, this show. There are no men in the show. It is. There are five women. Our other two ladies are wonderful <clears throat> New York actresses that we auditioned. Olivia <clears throat> Rose Barisi, who um, she has her master's from Lambda. She's a wonderful, young, vibrant actress uh, who came in and just blew us away. And uh, Ashley Brooke, who is a very different type, a uh, very uh, sort of New York style, uh, who also came in and just knocked us out with her audition. Uh, because we have women, these five women represent five different decades of life each of them are in a different decade even though you're a native of moore county mm-hmm. you live in new york your 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 life is up there your business is up there um what is it that um motivates you to bring your theater back to moore county well i actually sort of describe myself as half and half because i'm basically seven months there and five months here uh-huh. with the two shows a year yeah because there's a long preparation time um, I think it was just that um, m- each place feeds the other place, mm-hmm. and Moore County has needed this for some time because of uh, the churches and religious institutions and also the public school system. There have always been professional music people sort of carrying the banner for music here. Right. Theater's history in Moore County is much spottier. It really it has been touch and go um, for uh, at least as long as I can remember. And and knowing too that the that at one you know when Pinehurst really was like this sleepy village, they had there at the theater building this this beautiful winter stock theater. They right. did what we're doing now. They would bring these uh, TV stars to do. They did like ten plays a week from January to April back in the early '60s when the theater building was functioning as a theater. Mm-hmm. And all the demographics point to this area having a professional theater. So it wasn't a sentimental choice, and so it was. It was just the time to do it. Yeah. And here we are, seven years in. Well, it's always a pleasure to have you um, come and visit with us and talk about the productions. Um, can you give us a little bit of a glimpse into what next year might be bringing at this point, or are we ordinary? I could, but we have decided that we want to um, to go through the production process of this one at O'Neill um, before we announce next year, okay. so that we really know how how things are there and we can really make the best choice. But um, it'll be good. Then um, the spring show will be in May of uh, 2019. We already have our dates there, okay. and um, we can't wait to announce season eight. For anybody that um, is familiar with when Harry met Sally. Um, there were some indelible scenes in that movie that will stand the test of time 50 years from now with uh, Billy Crystal. Mm -hmm. Um, The Afrons are very talented, and um, they're going to be bringing their craft um, to the stage um, through executive producer Morgan Sills. Uh, The dates are October the 18th through the 21st. There are going to be six shows. Uh, Tickets can be easily had at JudsonTheater.com. By the way, there is an article in this... um, months a pine straw magazine uh regarding joyce Reeling. yes and there's also a feature about sally struthers and kim coles in this month's outreach nc okay and what you're doing by bringing from new york to here the theater um as you talked about from the sleepy village that we used to be to today uh i'd love you to stick around in the second set because our next guest um is a gentleman um he's lebanese he came here to Moore County, and he opened a, a what I think is, and I speak from a little bit of experience, uh, very authentic um, Middle Eastern 
uh, restaurant called Grape Leaf Bistro. Yeah. So if you leave New York City and you come here now, it's still available to you. That's right. So stick around. Um, we're going to come back in the second set, and we're going to be speaking uh, all about the Grape Leaf Bistro. Um, our guest has been Morgan Sills with Judson Theater Company. We wish you the best of luck next week. Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much. We'll be right back. You didn't ask me during our taping. Mm. Why, why, why wouldn't? Why would you see Still Magnolias nine times? See, I love it. That, that you, but why would us. anybody? Yes. Why would anybody <laughs> say that? So I was a jewelry manufacturer. Okay. I had a showroom in the uh, Empire State Building, and during market weeks, we would have entertained buyers from all over the country. And I found a um, this show, which I thought was terrific. And right across the street was a great seafood restaurant in the village. And at the end of the day, I was so tired. I said, well, if I just use that venue and that restaurant in the evening, it would be easy. I wouldn't have to. I'd be on automatic pilot. But what I didn't plan was to fall in love with the play. And by the, I think the ninth time I saw it, my seats just kept getting better and better. I actually have a picture of the original cast uh, with me. They had me come up on stage after the show, of course, because I didn't want to be shut down. And I look at some of my office desk, and it... Uh, I can look at all the characters and know who was cast. So, I mean, people get an affinity for something sometimes in a backwards way. Right. Yeah, I think we're on. We're back, uh, all things Moore County, but that's the reason I did that. We referenced um, uh, the Grape Leaf Bistro in the first set with Morgan as we were talking about the Judson Theater and being a Moore County native. You will probably appreciate this as much as anybody that now you come to Moore County and there's, it's hard not to be able to find anything that you want to eat. True. And me being of Lebanese descent, I was delighted when I heard about um, the Grape Leaf Bistro, which has opened and is right next door to the Olive Garden in Southern mm -hmm. Pines. Uh, Michael Elogiel is here with us. And Michael, uh, you are Lebanese. Yes. Um, I can attest that your food is authentic. Thank you. And it is not um, a restaurant that is created for the American palate. And when I say that, I reference, and I won't name names, stores people can go into, and they have these pre-packaged containers of hummus in 42 different varieties. And it's all equally bad. But people go, take it home, and they think, well, we'll try the hummus, and we'll be exotic, and it because it's not the typical onion dip that people use. So what prompted you, because your food is authentic, what prompted you to come to Moore County? Uh, how did you select Moore County? Um, I just, and I just think it's great that you're here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, actually, it happened by, by circumstance. Okay. Um, I was like trying to be semi-retired. Okay. And uh, I guess me and the boredom just don't go along. Right. And I happened to see the uh I happened to see the space available. Right. And uh, one thing led to another and I ended uh the, you know uh leasing the place and uh I decided that uh why you know for the first time in my business career that right. I am starting uh my roots. Uh, to, to give, you know, or make uh, Lebanese food. Yes. And I thought it, it you know, would be uh, a good addition to the all the selections of other venues that uh, we have here in Southern Pines and uh, opened up the Grape Leaf. Um, the Mediterranean diet is very popular. Sure. Um, and there are many different facets to a Mediterranean diet. You, there's Lebanese. Yes. Or, okay. Um, the ingredients you use are very fresh. Thank you. There are a lot of things that you can go in and eat, and they are meatless. Absolutely. Um, a vegetarian could go in and have a very well-balanced meal. What are some of the, um, the authentic dishes um, that the, you're featuring? That the uh, Lebanese eggplant. Yes. Uh, this is a wonderful dish that is, uh, caters to vegetarians and vegans. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, right. the same thing with the what we call lubi, or uh, it's the uh, Italian Italian uh, beans, Italian cut beans, the right. flat ones. Right. And uh, we co- we cook them also in tomato sauce with onion, olive oil, uh-huh. uh, and uh, fresh garlic. And uh, there's uh, the uh, other Lebanese dishes, or or like the shawarma sandwiches, the platters. Uh, it's homemade hummus and baba ganoj and all of that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to share this menu with Morgan as you're speaking because I need to familiarize him with what's going on in Moore County. Thank you. I've had um, I've had occasion to come in and have lunch a couple of times, and um, Morgan, I can tell you the salads in there are. I, the other day I went in and I had a Greek salad, and with it I had a um, a dish of hummus with um, it was cut with spinach. Um, garnished with olive oil, um, garlic. Um, it was so tasty and it was, for some people, a meal in itself with the Greek bread, with the Syrian bread. Yep. And um, Michael brought over to me a, um, um, a dish of what's called zata. Can you tell people what zata yeah. is? Zatar is, is basically the wild grown oregano mm-hmm. that they pick and sun dry and then they uh, basically uh, hand rub it or or break it down where it's not the whole leaves and it's mixed with the uh, roasted sumac i mean uh, and and uh, sesame seeds and it's all mixed with rock salt also and uh, it has that lemony uh, from the sumac that lemony flavor and we mix it with olive oil and uh, you can eat it uh, on a piece of bread or you can toast it on a uh, regular flatbread toasted. Mm, you're making me hungry and, already. Uh, it is so really good. delicious and it, it goes great by itself or even with a salad, uh, with hummus, uh, with uh, yeah. labni, uh, with uh, all, all kinds of dishes. Right. You know. When I, uh, I go home to New York, um, I visit my sisters who live in Manhattan. We always, there's always one or two or three restaurants that we like to frequent and many times they're Middle Eastern and we used to always <clears throat> say, gosh, I wish we could get this food uh, at home. And now we can. And um, uh, it's, it's very casual. Absolutely. When you go in, and I have noticed uh, the few times I've been in for lunch, this is interesting, because uh, you are open for dinner. Yes. So the few times I've been in there for lunch, guess what I, I see? The same people. I say, are they following me around? So you have regulars who come back. Uh, in such a short time, I am so pleased yeah. uh, to see that folks already started coming multiple times. Uh, we've been open five weeks yeah. now, yeah. and uh, we've I've had people uh, repeat customers uh, four or five times, uh, at least once a week or twice sometimes. And uh, it seems that they're enjoying the food and, and, and taking a liking to the Mediterranean diet and, and the Lebanese food. Uh, you see, us, the Greeks, the Italians, were all strung along the yep. uh, the coast of on the Mediterranean, and we share a lot of common venues like the grape leaves, uh, uh, tabbouleh salad. Tabbouleh salad is more strictly Lebanese, but yes. like the Greek salad with the feta cheese and all of that. But just maybe slight different. Uh, ways of mixing it but using the same ingredients for those people that don't know what tabbouleh is i can tell you i had two grandmothers who would they would compete with one another for our attention as kids and it's a parsley salad it's cut with a lot of onions and lemon juice and olive oil and cracked wheat which and i still it's borgul thank you and i have a hard time pronouncing that word um arabic is a guttural um sounding language sometimes because in arabic as you grow up, you realize that if something sounds bad, it usually is. And if it sounds sweet and good, it usually is. Um, my grandmother would say to me when I was bad, Yechada Dino Leki. I knew that was bad. I knew whatever I did was wrong. Yeah. But then, if I did something okay, she would say, Yeslamli Anna. That was right, a little smoother yes, sounding. Stanley, yes, yes, of course. So you didn't have to understand the words to understand the meanings. <laughs> But the tabbouleh, uh, tabbouleh, if it's made the right way, is cut, I'm going to guess, with 90% parsley and 10% cracked wheat. If you go into a store and they're selling a pre-marketed type of tabbouleh, it's almost like 60% 
tabul uh, parsley and 40% cracked wheat, so the tabbouleh looks white, not green. They use that as a filler. As a filler. Yes. Yeah. Uh, to cut down on the, because uh, as, as as you know, the Mediterranean diet is very labor intensive. Yes, it is. And it has to be prepared right. Yes. You know, uh, back in Lebanon, you can hardly find a restaurant nowadays that uses burgul at all in it. They just use the is that right? a, a hint of onions and tomatoes and mainly parsley and the seasoning. Right. You know, you have to you have to use really good uh, extra virgin olive oil. You have to use fresh lemon juice, mm -hmm. uh, etc. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and uh, here you know uh, we put a little bit, but it's not going to be overwhelming. Right. Or or you don't see it a whole lot in the salad. Right, and the salad, the salads themselves could stand alone as meals. Absolutely, um, and also fatouche. That's a wonderful salad. Tell us about fatouche. Fatouche is, uh, it doesn't have no lemon juice. It does not. No, what makes it, what gives it that uh, lemony taste is the use of sumac, uh, and it's not poison sumac as most Americans think. Yeah, this is an an, an herb that they. Uh, uh, grind very very fine okay it's uh, dark red like uh, almost uh, crimson yeah and and you use that instead of the lemon juice with the olive oil and it's simple yeah. yet it's so exquisite it's um it's a crunchy salad uh, absolutely with a lot of fresh, romaine a lot of a lot of uh, fresh vegetables yeah. uh, and it has to be romaine lettuce right. the, main, the main ingredient right and uh, you use lots of cucumbers, uh -huh. uh, onions, tomatoes, uh, bell peppers, red, white. You can use any kind of radishes. Yeah. You know, you can you can put in it and mix it all together. And we serve the toasted Lebanese bread and, and use it as a, uh, uh, basically uh, like croutons. We just crack it and put it on top and the customers can have it like when it's warm right uh, or or even mix it with the salad and eat it and it's really really a very good salad and healthy yeah the um i, I will tell you uh, lunch and dinner prices uh, range anywhere from uh, five six dollars for appetizers um uh, and maza as we call it different types of appetizers up to maybe 15 or 16 dollars for dinner yeah and everything else in between so it's uh, exceptionally reasonably priced for such fresh food Thank you. Uh, the most expensive item really is what sixteen nine nine for a yeah. uh, beef kebab. Um, you know shish kebab. Yes. And uh, even for that, we use uh, really tenderloin. You know choice tenderloin meat, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, with the, with a good rice pilaf and roasted vegetables. You've got a meal along with a salad. Yeah, and you've got a meal for two, which is a mixed grill kebab, chicken kefta, and um, and shish kebabs, um, and kefta. Is am I mis Is that lamb, uh, or is it just seasoned? In the old country, it, it is used with lamb. Okay. Uh, here, uh, we don't use lamb uh, a lot because right. it it is uh, we use it you know like half and half. Okay. And and most of the time we'll use beef, uh, but it's the seasoning that makes it, and it's uh, very very uh, tasty. Yeah. What are your hours for dinner? Uh. We open every day, 11 o'clock, and uh, we stay open during the week till 9 p.m. You're continually open yes, till 9? Yes, continually, yes. Okay. And uh, on Friday, Saturday, till 10 o'clock. And we close on Sunday. You know, down the road, um, we have to hook up with Morgan and the Judson Theater Company, create a, a Middle Eastern dinner ticket package love that. Uh, for the theater yes. uh, in Moore County. Um, Absolutely. And either before, no, it would be before because yep. of the hours. Mm -hmm. But um, it's so cool to see what's happening in Moore County that um, these many different ethnic uh, restaurants are opening. And uh, there's so much, do you remember, I mean, when I first came here in 1980, 1979, I think there were three restaurants. Mm. I mean, and they all serve yeah. beet, meat and potatoes. And um, then in the 90s, when I finally moved here in the late 90s, you know, you gradually saw a couple of more restaurants. Today, it, Moore County is almost unrecognizable. 
Yeah, and also there's there's something very special about having an individually owned and operated restaurant where you can get to know the owner right. and you, you know that the food is fresh and the person is is here in the community and part of the community and invested in the community and understands the impact of owning a local business. Mm -hmm. You know, straight shooter, you know, tell you tell you the truth and um, mm -hmm. and it's worthy of our support. Yeah, it is. Thank you. Uh, and it is that is uh, my MO you know uh because i reach out to the customers mm -hmm. uh, every day uh all the customers whether they're repeated customers or yeah. new, new uh customers that are coming in and just to make sure that the food is uh good and 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 we cater to their needs you, know? you have trouble understanding the southern accent no, no. Not, not really not anymore <laughs> i married a girl from the south anyway okay that's right he did was yeah b born and raised in savannah georgia okay oh you yes know? savannah so I'm, I'm used to yes. the uh southern drawl oh yeah savannah so beautiful they've got those streets that are paved with seashells in the old part yes yes, yes nice. indeed yeah downtown how mm -hmm. long have you been in um, in the south uh, I came to Greensboro originally in about 1980. Did you really? Yes. So your accent hasn't softened in any shape or form that I can pick up. No. But your no. wife, uh, she hasn't influenced your. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. He speak. He speaks. He reminds me uh, growing up as a kid um, in and around Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn. Sure. Uh, where there was a very and where my, both my parents actually believe it or not were born and they lived like three blocks away from each other didn't know each other the sounds of the accent as a kid you know we as we talked in the first set about the scent of a certain fragrance can take you back to a time of course so can the vernacular so can the accent and you remind me so much of um, the adults of my childhood the accent yes and I thought I swear I thought as a boy when I grew up I would become a man when my accent changed uh -huh. kids kids don't know <laughs> no, no right I said, when am I gonna start to talk like that right it never happened <laughs> Yeah. See, when I was acting, I had to learn standard American <coughs> speech, this very neutral, right. accent-free right. sort of thing. But then when I quit, I let my natural accent come back. Yes, we didn't cover dessert. My eyes are yeah. wandering to the pictures of the yummy desserts on this menu. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, and you have to help me with the pronunciation. Okay. Baklava? In, in Lebanese, it's pronounced baklava. Baklava. But, but here, Americans it is pronounce. more baklava. baklava. Baklava, yeah. Yeah. They just Americanize it. Um, the sweets, the desserts are um, special. Yes. Um, the mamul, I haven't had it. The mamul is is a stuffed, uh, not pastry. It's it's uh, made from semolina. Uh huh. And they stuff them uh, two, three different ways, either with pistachios and walnuts, or they uh, stuff them with dates, and they are baked. Right. Uh, and then you sprinkled with uh, confectionate sugar or you know so as good as they are though there goes your diet uh a little bit yeah but uh, really uh, and your sugar count <laughs> well yes of course and we have a wonderful that uh, lemon cello mascarpone cake uh -huh. that is very very good cake mm -hmm. i remember as a kid uh with my grandmother's making um different desserts the use of rose and orange waters absolutely essential 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 the court uh they're different brands now people can buy but um yes they're watered down from what they were they're distilled they are distilled yeah both of them uh you may find them uh cortas cortas that is a uh, big big uh, producer company lebanese right and they uh you know uh, import it here right uh, and it's found in in, in most uh, mediterranean or middle eastern uh uh, stores that sell, uh, you know, uh, Middle Eastern products, mm -hmm. and uh, it is it's 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 wonderful. Even the smell of it. Yes, it is. You know, yeah. uh, back when we were kids, if you had a stomach ache, they'd give you a little bit of the rose water, uh -huh. you know, and sweeten it a little bit, uh -huh. and it kind of soothes uh -huh. your your stomach. It's a sweet smell, um, and the desserts are um, they're exceptional. Um, you can dine in or pick up. Absolutely. And um, people can call the restaurant at 246-2468. Uh, they can go online 
at grapeleafbistro.com. Um, and even though we say in this area that it's next to the um, Olive Garden, what do people who don't know this area go, how do we know where the Olive Garden is? It's on 15501 um, uh, across the street from Outback Steakhouse. Absolutely, um, yes. Centrally located. And um, definitely we'll be in to see you for lunch, for dinner. And um, I wish you the very best of luck this Thank fall you. season. And I hope a lot of people in town get to discover the Grape Leaf Bistro. Thank you very much, Bill. Michael, it's good, it's good to see you. And um, uh, Morgan, it's always good to see you. And we hope to have you back. So we're wishing you luck with the Judson Theater next week. Thank you. We're wishing you luck with the Grape Leaf Bistro. Appreciate it. And we are all hopeful that our bad weather is behind us and we can just go in and now enjoy a fall season of beautiful weather because yes. it's the best time of the year in Moore County. Indeed. Um, everybody, have a great week. Thank you for listening to All Things Moore County.